Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show where we bring you all the Android news that matters to you, or at least to me. I'm Andrew Moore Crispin, and this week we're in sunny Orlando, Florida for CTIA Wireless 2011. Before we jump into the latest and greatest smartphones coming out of CTIA 2011, we earn enough to pay return airfare. As much as we like it here, we'd really like to come home. Android Weekly is brought to you by Hover.com, the easiest way to buy and manage your domain names. I've bought a ton of domain names through Hover.com. My latest acquisition is Bitterscotch.com. That's the domain I'll use if ever I get fired from Butterscotch.com for being too glib. You can get 10% off by going to the promo code you see at the bottom of the screen. Back to the business at hand, smartphones at CTIA 2011. Now, recently, Mobile World Congress happened in Barcelona, Spain. A lot of the big announcements happened there, but what's good about CTIA 2011 is that you actually get a chance to get hands-on with the devices that were announced in Barcelona. And of course, companies will save a few announcements for CTIA. Now, my favorite smartphone concept coming out of CTIA 2011 is the Kyocera Echo. And it's not even a concept, it's actually retail ready. And what I really like about this phone, it really looks like a standard candy bar style phone until you flip the main screen, it does some pretty nifty transformer style acrobatics to become the first real viable dual screen phone. Now, we'd like to have seen a dual core processor pushing the dual screens. I really hope this one takes off so other smartphone makers will start copying it, making the dual screen smartphone a new category as opposed to a one-off oddity. Also, this will push developers to start creating dual screen specific apps. The major Achilles heel here, as you might expect, is battery life. You don't double up the screens without sacrificing some longevity. Kyocera is bundling an extra battery with separate charger in with the phone, and that's not a good sign. At $200 with a two-year contract from Sprint, the Kyocera Echo could be a contender, power management woes aside. Glasses Free 3D is not just for the Nintendo 3DS anymore. We saw a few 3D-capable smartphones here at CTIA 2011, most notable with the offerings from HTC and LG. The HTC Evo 3D is a capable 1.2 GHz dual-core smartphone with a gig of RAM. It does everything you'd expect of an Android smartphone. More interesting, though, is the Glasses Free 3D. While we obviously can't show you the effect with our decidedly monocular cameras, suffice it to say, images jump off the screen, rip your face off, poke you in the eye, and leave you screaming in agony. On the back, dual 5-megapixel cams let you shoot your own 3D videos and stills to fill in the decided gaps in the availability of real 3D content. The LG Optimus 3D is another glasses-free 3D phone, another dual-core 1.2 GHz processor, dual 5-megapixel cams, and the same 4.3-inch screen size as the HTC Evo 3D. If you like what you see, hit up butterscotch.com slash CTIA2011 for more detail on these 3D-capable phones and a bunch of other smartphones from CTIA2011. The first Android smartphone dedicated to gaming, the Xperia Play, perhaps better known as the PlayStation phone, is here. Well, it's not here, it's there. It's a capable Android smartphone on its front. Slide the screen up, though, and you reveal immediately recognizable PlayStation-style controls, a direction pad and the X, circle, square, and triangle buttons you're used to. In addition, two touchpads take the place of the analog control sticks. Xperia Play launches with a commitment from the biggest gaming studios working in mobile, most specifically Ubisoft and EA. They're going to be making games for the phone station. That's not quite all the news that's fit to Google. Make sure you tune in next week when we'll bring you our favorite tablets from the show. For full show notes, hit up butterscotch.com. Until next week, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.